I work as the uh, general counsel and chief compliance officer for a global private fund and we operate in several different jurisdictions and we provide investment advisory and investment opportunities globally primarily to pension funds, ultra high net worth individuals and other institutions. So as far as IA or artificial intelligence, what we do is we leverage our existing resources by leveraging technology itself. So what we do is we look at what individuals do within the firm and try to replace those functions by machine learning and artificial intelligence itself. So for example, some of the more mundane and operational approaches that we have traditionally taken have been replaced by AI. We also have integrated it into uh, not only our internal organic platform, but we've also integrated it with our other outsourced vendors as well. Well, that's a great question because there's many vendors out there that provide these types of services. What we look at is primarily one, ease of use, how intuitive they are to use. Secondly, can they integrate into our existing platform? And third, we look at, are they scalable? As a firm grows, can they grow with us? Well, there's a lot of risks. The first risk is, is it a function that needs to be done by a person? Is it a function that is jointly between a person and IA? Can it really successfully be transitioned thoroughly to AI? Do we lose the functionality? Do we lose something in the process by transferring it to AI? Aside from that, there's other corporate um, decisions that need to be made about cybersecurity, about privacy, about how well we want to use AI and whether it makes sense for us going forward. A successful program, you have to make sure that prior to implementation, that you understand exactly how it's going to work. If there's any policies or procedures or protocols, they have to be implemented. The most important thing that um, distinguishes a successful from a non-successful program is beta testing. So before it actually even goes live, you wanna make sure that the platform works. I believe they are improving security measures because there's only so much an individual can see um, right now, AI is so sophisticated, they can pick up cues, they can pick up red flags, they can pick up intrusions, and AI has really replaced a lot of functions that traditional security officers and private agency officers have completed. Well, that is really a mixed bag, and there's a lot of controversy about it. Individuals are used to um, speaking to someone individually, and in fact, uh, they feel that their needs are better met when they're using um, a real person to speak to. So it's really a matter of training and having them understand that their calls are going to be um, addressed quickly and probably more efficiently than, than a person. Well, I think that's a demographic issue. I think that for millennials, for people who are really accustomed to using technology, I think it, it they feel better with a bot. I think for older demographic groups, they're still getting accustomed to it. So what we do, it's a very good triage mechanism. So if someone contacts us, if we have a bot, an AI, um, system in place, they can triage and prioritize the concerns and we can determine where those concerns or who within the firm um, should address them. Well again, that's a mixed bag and there's a lot of discussion about AI in general. I will say that in Europe, for example, with the uh, GDPR, which is a new privacy act, there is a lot of provisions against AI, for example, and the fact that humans have to interact with customers on certain levels. So I would say in the United States, it's probably upward, and there's gonna be expansion in Europe um, 
we're probably stable right now. Robo advisors. So there's a great many robo advisors out there. Betterment, for example, is one of them, and a lot of the larger financial firms have implemented robo advisors. Again, it's um, a demographic situation. The ones that have been successful have been like Betterment, where they have a tiered system where you could have robo only, you can do robo with a person, or you can even have it more complex where the person would really be in charge and Robo could help you. Um, with financial services, I think it's really important to have a human interaction because there's certain things that AI right now wouldn't be able necessarily to determine. I'm very scared about that. I mean, again, there's a great deal of controversy and discussion about AI in general. And there's a great deal of discussion about this whole thing about singularity, about how far AI will progress and actually take over all the human jobs themselves. So I think that it has to be a very um, contemplative approach. And I do not envision a day where AI does everything. And I think we have to understand how we control AI and AI doesn't control us. Well, again, I think that it has to slow down a bit and that what we have to do is we have to understand how we can, can control it. There's a great deal of privacy issues. There's privacy issues about smart cities, for example. In England, for example, they're almost being banned about AI being involved in um, you know, developing cities and in household functions. I think AI within the household, we have to be extraordinarily careful of, especially these devices like Portal, because smart appliances and smart devices do have the ability to intrude upon um, privacy of individuals. So again, we have to make sure that um, it's contemplative and that we have the regulations and the laws behind it to ensure that um, individual privacy is protected. Well, I think I'm most excited about how we can use AI in a practical, successful, and efficient approach. So no one should be completely against AI. They should say, hey, it's a great tool. How can I use it? So it's developing the ability to figure out and determine what part of AI works best for you, become comfortable with it, make it scalable, and then implement it for, for, for more. Uh, I'm very excited about speaking at the conference. There's not very many, if at all, conferences which address AI, and I think it's a tremendous opportunity for everyone, if you haven't registered already, to really seriously consider going to this because it's going to be a tremendous and exciting event.